Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Love Hour Lovecast. Lovecast with Kev and Liz. I just totally made up Lovecast right there. Jingles everywhere. Jingles everywhere. <laughs> thank you, guys. Actually, speaking of jingles, um, thank you, everyone, for bringing or sending us your jingles. We're going to just start randomly inserting them into the podcast. Mm-hmm. So thank you so much. Um, again, thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Miss Kevin Stage. And I'm her co-host, the Kev on Stage. University. <laughs> we are so glad that you are here with us today. Um, to as always, we are going. No, before we start. Okay. 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 Before we actually start, I want to give the disclaimer that the point of the love hour is that um, Kevin and I consider ourselves marriage champions. We are not marriage counselors. Um, this is not a substitute for marriage counseling. Mm-hmm. And so if you like what you hear, um, you can support us by giving us a thumbs up, by rating us, all of those things. Five stars um, only. You five feel stars me? If you only. Don't feel five star, then don't, don't go oh, over there. Go seek the Lord again. Seek his face again. And you heard him wrong. Yes. He always, been doing he great always communicates ratings. five stars. Yeah. <laughs> we got a lot of ratings. We do have a lot of ratings. Thank you guys so much for your support. But if there's something that we're talking about and it hits the nerves with you, make sure you share it with your spouse. And um, we want healthy dialogue and conversations to come from that. And then if you need, go seek a therapist. Yes. There ain't nothing wrong with it. And, yep. Go seek a therapist. I don't see nothing wrong. With a little therapy. I was about to say, child. I do see something wrong with R. Kelly. I was about to say, all the canceled. You're about to get the podcast canceled. (laughs) Trying to quote him. Okay, so I wanted to get that out the way. And so now we're going to start, as always, with our this or that That question. So the question is, and all of the this or that questions for February are about to be. Wait, can we just, can I make a suggestion to you as a producer? Can we just call it that or this? It's this or that, though. I know, but we're making it our own. Because the, the jingle. You're the only one. I've always said no, this or that. You the just... people. The jingle says that or this, too. With because Kevin you Liss. say that. I know. That's what I'm saying. Can we just call it officially that or this with Kevin Liss? This is our segment. Only because it rhymes. This or that one. Listen, Kev. I mean. That. You should have came up with a new jingle because I named the segment this or that. But that doesn't rhyme with either of our names. If my name was Pat, it'd be perfect. What? This or that with listen, Pat. Rhymes. Jingles need rhyming. I digress. Go ahead. It's time for this or that with Cam and Liz. This or that with Cam and Liz. Tomato. Tobato. Potato. Potato. We choose each other no matter the problem. This or that with Cam and Liz. This or that with Cam and Liz. This or that. Okay. The question is. Oh, you this were saying all the this or that's in February are going to be about sex. Yes, all the this or that in February are about to be about sex. I already have them written down, and I'm super excited about them. Okay, but anyway, uh, this month's or today's <laughs> this or that question is, would you rather be able to control the weather or talk to animals? Ooh. The weather of the whole world or where I am? Let's say the whole world. The whole world's weather? Yeah. Oh, that. You could make money off that. You probably you could, could predict futures on orange crops. You could, you could you could you could place bets. What do animals have to talk about? Dog probably just be saying bark in his head. It just be saying bark, and then he come he be barking. <laughs> but like, you don't know if you'd be able to talk to them. You'd be able to find out if they were. But saying then I basically thing. be I could be Storm. That would and be Storm lit. was saving the day. Storm was my favorite ex. All the ex men. Yeah, they did she not was have my her. They was getting washed. She was absolutely 100% my favorite X-Men. Okay, that was an easy question. We'll scrap it. We'll move no, on. Because I agree. No, it was easy because I was... Th- talking to animals would be cool, but how could I monetize that? Hello? <laughs> I mean, I just like... The weather affects my day-to-day life. That's what true. animals think... Tony Baker? Oh, he would love that. Talk to animals? To talk to animals. Yeah. He'd be Dr. Doolittle. But me? If I knew I'd never have to have... A, every day, wherever I am at, it's 73. So it's only... You would only be able to control your where you are the whole world but where you but you have to be there man it would never rain again in my life <laughs> but then it would be dry and everything would be dead well, ain't my problem i'm gonna be dead too 30 years that is oh, your problem I, I never thought about like plants and wildlife ah okay it rains in la when i'm on tour <laughs> <laughs> dude whatever when i'm not in town whatever happens happens but you know how dope it would be to be able to be plan a show in Minnesota in January. People are like, it's going, Kev, what about the snow? Ah, little do you know. 
<laughs> out of nowhere, it's gonna be seventy five degrees that would be on my cool. on my day. Okay, I don't know. Every time he comes to town, it's a sunny day. Have you noticed that? People wouldn't even notice that. They would. What if you weren't able to tell everybody? So you wouldn't be able to monetize it that way. Still the so same. So when I couldn't bet on it? You couldn't, yeah. No, you could bet on it, I guess, but you couldn't tell people, like, I control this, and if you want me to be where you are and control it there, oh, then man. I'll do that, but you have to pay me. Does it matter if I can't stunt? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I still think the weather is what I would do. I agree. Because I just feel like I could that could affect... Me. Animals' thoughts mean I would love to know why cats come in our backyard all the time. Oh, my god! That's the one thing. Cats be in our backyard just walking. I feel like they're telling each other, you know, it's a great backyard I to walk through. I hate that. Kevin Liz's uh, backyard is great. They got a tree. They got a pool. They just be walking through yeah, and just I, chilling. Dude. So that's the, if I could trade it for one day, I'd be like, yo, cats, what is happening? <laughs> but weather, man, that's what about you? I would choose weather, too. Weather was my answer to begin with, but I just thought it was just cooler. But after all of your answers, I definitely yeah. go with weather. I don't think I, I, I don't think I would want the responsibility of the whole world, though. That's why it would only be where you are. It would be like your own personal, like because that weather means I could go to Seattle for a summer and it's never going to rain that summer. Yes. And they're going to be like, and then it's beautiful there. Yeah, it is in the summer. But only when it's not raining. Yeah, and I travel enough to like because I was in Dallas this weekend. It was freezing. I, I want an app. <laughs> Dallas, I'm on the way, 75. <laughs> Siri, make it 75 when I get there. Okay, and then I could get out of, like, if I didn't want to do something, or, like, if a, if a rival comedian had a show, snowed out. No, it's only where you are. I'll go to his show, snowed out. That's I'll cool. follow his tour and be like, bro, it's snowing you're, in. You're being in, mean. I would do it. Yeah, I'm I know addictive. You would. <laughs> okay, so that was our better this question. Share what your, if you're watching us, what your response You could put the jingle at the end. That was that or this. Thing. share your this or that Josh you'll find a place for it um, <laughs> in the comment section okay. if you are um, weather watching or us. Dr. Little storm or Dr. Doolittle in the would comments. you rather essentially be storm or Dr. <laughs> Little okay so now we're going to jump right into our topic today okay. and that is um, how to or how do we navigate through life transitions I'm going through changes I don't even know that song no it's the theme song to Big Mouth you shouldn't watch it it's awful oh I don't even know it's a great theme song though okay going uh, through changes so the spawn of this question if i could use that spawn. yeah sure we're gonna go with it um <laughs> or what spawned this question is probably better um is well kev brought it up but honestly we have been going through a lot of transitions Woo! um and when you go through transitions they often affect you mm -hmm. and therefore that's going to have an effect on your relationship yes and sometimes those transitions can be detrimental to your relationship if you don't navigate them correctly absolutely uh, having a healthy happy relationship through and coming or coming out of life transitions in a happy and healthy place in your relationship can be difficult yes and can um if you don't navigate them correctly can be an end to your relationship absolutely so we have gone through quite a bit of of transition so them out yeah, just starting. I mean, there's just life transitions and then we can go like more specifically to this okay. last year or so. Um, but for me, our and we've talked about this, one of the biggest transitions that I've had in my life was my parents' divorce. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so funny. I, we were talking about the postpartum depression episode and I saw someone was like, I don't understand why that affected her so much. And the thing about me, and I think for most people, is that your nuclear home, where you grew up, is going to imprint who you are. Mm -hmm. It's going to forever have an imprint on who you are. That's your upbringing. That is like I identify who I am with like that space of my mom, my dad, the house that I grew up with in, like all of those things. And when that is um, broken, and it's broken, it was broken for me so much later in life. So mm -hmm. I didn't grow up 
you know, in this norm. This yeah. was a new norm I had to adjust to. Um, it, that sh- that can be shattering for people. Absolutely. And when you compound that with the and the way that I found out, like there's a lot of other factors that was going on. Um, but when you compound that with the fact that I had just had a baby and like all of these other things, like it was that compounded can, life. Absolutely, changes. it was a compounded life change. So that happened, and then I had um, becoming a mother is a life change not only for me but it's going to affect you and i mm-hmm. and at the time kevin and i started dating obviously we were in high school we didn't have any kids and he was trying to do the play thing and i was like right there you know doing the um stage like, manager stage manager is what it's called in college so on their plays i have the scripts i'm calling the shots i'm telling them where to go i'm controlling the lighting like i'm doing all of those things i'm having like a very active role in the most important role in I will, a yeah. play not and I, it was close. actually a lot of fun doing that yeah. um but then i have a baby and you, i realize i can't do those things in the same capacity and have a child because he is quite literally an infant and these practices are I hated on my dreams he did but these it practices was, are long and often and, and trying arduous. to yeah have both and just simply having an infant in a play mm-hmm. rehearsal is just not the most ideal situation so and it was so abrupt what do you mean you went from stage managing being very integral into everything we did mm-hmm. to not being in mm. a part at all yeah well you don't even you really realize that like while you're pregnant that that's what's going to happen mm-hmm. it just kind of happened like you're all of a sudden you're like wait this isn't going to work because i at think all. you tried at first yeah you, but you, you brought just, zay to a, a rehearsal or two and you were just like yeah this isn't gonna work it's too disruptive because he's crying you got to yeah. change him, you got to feed him he don't and, like the play yeah, he's it's not a big disruptive. fan of the re- of the writing so you have <laughs> So then you have, you know, that transition. And again, that's going affects me. It affects you. And then it affects us, yes. to be honest. And then um, you quitting your job and uh, trying to or not quitting, getting fired from your job, trying to do the comedy thing. I have a vision of what our life is going to be, that we're both going to be working these nine to five jobs and doing this, that and the third. Don't be vision in my yeah. life. Well, you visited in my life. I didn't have vision. I, but you I, didn't tell me that wasn't it until you I got was fired. Secretly dreaming. Exactly. I sure didn't. So then that had a plan. Exa- that is interesting. Yes. I had a vision for my life that I hadn't shared with you. Mm-hmm. You had a vision for our life together. And it wasn't until I got fired that I was like, I might as well tell her now. Because you, when I got fired, you're like, okay, well, what job you going to get now? I was like, no, I don't want Yeah, to. and I wasn't ready for that answer at it all. It didn't even work. I had to I had to get a job. But. Eventually. But you didn't get a job for a while. Yeah, I was on unemployment. And you feel me? Uh, for a while. Okay, not that long. No, but I, I mean, the, the point, church. it wasn't like. I worked at the church. Baby. Yeah. I wasn't even on unemployment for a year. It was a couple months. Oh, no, then I went, I went back on it. Um, and then what's up unemployment I'm back boy. what's up with them little so checks? then after that was um, we moved yes uh, Isaiah got that job or not that job he's got a starring role in the um, Little Rascals remake mm-hmm. that changed our dynamics in our relationship you wanted to move I wasn't ready to move again that was a vision of what I w- thought our life was going to be versus yours um, but by then you should have had an idea Moving was still not in the cards. Moving was not part of it, though. Okay. We were, we were trying to move to Dallas or Atlanta. The, uh, well, we had before. talked about it, but it's we had just bought a house. Like, it didn't... Mm-hmm. Or not just, but we had, yeah, had the house. Yeah, it didn't seem feasible. Yeah, it didn't seem feasible. We just started at Boeing. Mm-hmm. Uh, literally, we would probably work there for 18 months to... Probably 18 months by the time we had moved. Um, okay, so all of that. And then we moved to L.A. Mm-hmm. And this is, like, the most recent transition. So last year, you went on tour... Last year, I went on tour with you, and then um, my job was closing, so I was laid off. And this most recent, from I would actually almost say from the tour up until mm, child yesterday, man. today, today, this morning, <laughs> it has a been a probably even with all i just give the background for all of those transitions because that's really what life is about yes transitioning um and also staying married is about navigating those transitions uh so better help 
is uh, a sponsor of today's episode, a sponsor of this podcast, and they help in so many ways. This is a blessing of the internet. The fact that you can be in Los Angeles and if the best therapist is in Kansas City, you can have access to that person. Or if you're in Kansas City and the best therapist is in New York City, through BetterHelp, you have access to that. Because I'm from El Paso, Texas. They usually don't have the best of most things. <laughs> you know, the best of most things. No usually, shade to El Paso. A little bit of shade. Um, because the best of most things usually flock to the biggest cities where they can make sure, the, best, the most money. And yeah. then people in El Paso, they got a lot of the best stuff. A lot of the Tex-Mex. A lot of Tex-Mex. <laughs> and, you know, uh, football players, basketball players, coaches. But they weren't the best in uh, therapy. But because of BetterHelp, you don't have to worry about that. BetterHelp is amazing. It'll help you assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist. You can start communicating in under 48 hours. It's not a crisis line. It's not help self. It's not self-help. Excuse me. It's professional therapy done securely online. Uh, and for me and Melissa and Josh, very busy individuals. Prior to the pandemic, I used to drive to therapy and it was about 30 minutes, depending on traffic, hour and a half round trip most times. With BetterHelp. I can go to my office or my car or on a walk and do my therapy sure. right then, save myself a lot of time. Uh, the service is available for clients worldwide. You can log into your account anytime and send a message to your therapist. You get timely and thoughtful responses. Plus, you can schedule a week, you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions. So you won't ever have to sit in an uncomfortable waiting room as with traditional therapy. Better help wants you to start living a happier life today. So do that by visiting betterhelp.com slash love hour. Love hour. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, better help, not a health, and join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. In fact, so many people have been using better help. They are recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. Once again, for love hour listeners only, get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com, B E T T E R H E L P dot com slash love hour. I think that is what the key, the, the longer we're married, the more I realize your ability to navigate life's transitions mm -hmm. is the single, more, single most important part to whether you stay married or not. Oh, absolutely. Because those transitions, they aren't just about the act of like, oh, we moved or, oh, we started a new job. They're also about how that act affects you. Yes. And how it changes you and how you adjust. And that adjustment or that change or that, um, you know, however it pegs you, it's going to make you interact with your spouse differently and you know what and well hold on and they can be resistant Remember we said to that? yes we did <laughs> um your spouse can be resistant to that change and that's what causes friction and that's what causes that we're not or that means we're not navigating this transition together yes. we're fighting through it yes. and then that's how you can wind up and interestingly enough i think us being married for 15 years, almost 15 years, mm -hmm. made this most recent transition that more. Di Usually being married for a long time helps us sure. navigate stuff mm -hmm. easier. But in this case, the 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 length of time we've been doing something one way mm -hmm. worked against this transition. Right. Because now you got to go to what I, we, I've been talking. We've been talking about this, but not on the podcast, the core programming. Yes. You know, so I feel so like explain to them what it is. So core programming comes from the show Westworld that I watched. The robot monsters <laughs> were uh, <laughs> they were designed and they had these feelings, hopes, ambitions, whatever. Right. And their core program was, say, Teddy, for example, he was uh, the Cyclops guy actor. I don't know his name, but his core part of what is core programming things was to protect Dolores. And that every time he'd get killed, he'd wake up, protect Dolores. And he could, it's it's hard to go against that. And then every other robot was like maybe was mischievous or whatever, but they had their core programming was the main thing that they do, right? So um, as they became self-aware in the show, they had to go against their core programming. Okay. And even when it was not in their best interest, it was hard to mm -hmm. like, to, to, to buck against what you kind of been programmed to do. So... Uh, I want to talk about our most recent transition first and then okay. work backwards because okay. this is the most fresh one. Okay. So the thing Melissa and I have been dealing with the most is what made me kept on, kept on stage is ambition, desire, sheer will, working alone mm -hmm. and just getting after it. Mm -hmm. Shoot, edit myself, come up with topics, study, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, blah. 
what's going to make Kev on Stage become Kev on Stage to- Studios and Family Affair Media mm-hmm. is letting go of some of those things mm-hmm. and letting Melissa do some work, doing some work with Josh, somebody you know, be it, getting a bigger team because to scale to where I, where we are doing conferences and movies and TV shows and touring or whatever, it's impossible that I have to lead every single thing. Mm-hmm. So back up to last year when I want to do the tour, right? Uh, I first asked Melissa and my brother, hey, guys, want to go on tour. Want to do this, this is before my job announced that they were closing. Yes. Um, and this is, so I'm thinking... Child, this this is gonna be a two part episode. So just a little bit of context. So at the time, um, I thought I was going to quit my job. I decided to go part time. I forgot about yes. this and how it so, affected me. Yes. So I would decide. I was gonna. We had decided um, that I was gonna quit, and I reneged. I, I reneged. Um, she don't play spades, but she reneged. I in did real renege. life. Um, I, I don't, for whatever reason, I reneged. I was scared and I ended up reneging. But at the same time, so hold my, on, hold on, hold on. Before, in the, before you reneged, it was going to be me, Liz, and Jay. Yes. We was going to plan it. So I'm moving forward with this mindset. Then she reneges. Then okay? I renege. So but I'm already in my mind, the train is already started. The train and is starting. In my mind, when the train starts, it just picks up speed until it's, Japanese bullet train, 500 miles per hour. So it was going to be, yeah, me, Jason, Kev, Jason's Kevin's brother, um, doing the tour thing. And I was supposed to quit my job. I didn't. I ended up going part time. Um, and then I found out we would get, and actually, what and the Jason other thing, sick. yeah, Jason got sick. So now so it, was, it was like all of these things. It was like you, when you have this plan, this is how things are going to go. A, B, and then C, because I've already laid this out. And then I was like, yeah, but I'm scared. And my job, when I went to them, I was like, I'm thinking about quitting or maybe going part-time. Like, what do you guys think? And they were like, well, actually, we were about to, like, we're literally writing up a new job. We're going to give you a promotion. What do you mean you're going to quit? And I was like, oh. Quit? <laughs> quit <laughs> thinking I was working that other job. I mean, they I were, admit, they were not more work, yes, right, guys? They were definitely what's the new pay? Literally creating a position for me. Yeah, literally that was happening, and I'm walking in like I'm thinking about quitting. <laughs> um, and so, um, and I was scared. Like I, again, I'm the stable person in our relationship. Never been the dreamer. So that's just context. Mm-hmm. So keep going. So then she reneges. So she now can't do what. The capacity. She can't do what? Because I'm going back to like, oh, stage manager Liz is back. Yeah. Me and Liz and Jay, Frederick's family. <laughs> right? <laughs> you so, do this song all the time. So, you and Jason. <laughs> so she gets, or he gets sick. He can't, he can't travel. Travel. And he was trying to do stuff, but it was like, I didn't even I feel comfortable with I traveled with Jay it. one time when he was getting sick, and and I don't want to talk about his cancer because i will cry and i have a stuff stuff to do today <laughs> and i cannot be having to take a nap after this <laughs> so he traveled me does make you he, so wants, tired. he wants to be on ask and i'm like bro i'm not gonna cry for an hour uh, yeah. i'm not ready yeah so um anyway i was traveling with him one time and he's traveling with me and i'm like oh this dude yeah he cannot do he's not strong this was one city yeah he wasn't show and i'm like you can't do this and yeah. he's like i got it i got it and then remember in christmas he was like, he was just Done. frail, just, small. Yeah, he was in no position. And he had no beard. And I was like, ah, if you're coming around, you look like a turtle. It's just weird. Stop it. But no, but seriously, like, I realized, and this was before his treatment got intense. Yeah. I was like, Jay, you're going to have to get better. Mm-hmm. You're going to have to get stronger. Do what the doctor says. You can't travel physically. Sure. Like, stop. Sure. So that happened. Liz stopped. So now I'm like, okay, now I got to plan this tour by myself mm-hmm. so i start because this is what i know mm-hmm. all right no problem i wasn't even i wouldn't even say i was even mad at you sure like i wasn't even mad and i obviously wasn't mad at jay but i still had to get this work done sure. so what i had to do i did as much as i could by myself i i not hired but a friend of mine helped with the travel mm-hmm. and then we brought on a, a producer right me and melissa <laughs> I didn't know we were going to go here today, but uh, there's some... Let me hear some, what you're about to no, say no, so I'm I not, can tell you to I'm, edit no, this I'm out, not, I'm not going to tell you to edit. It's going to be good. <laughs> we were having conference calls with the tour producer, right? And oh, Melissa, yes. Melissa was... I, so this time, we would have the conference calls when I'd be driving home from work. Melissa would be on the phone, but have it on mute because you'd be 
homework with the boys cooking like so the conference call duties. again just context so the conference call is about five maybe six o'clock um i'm getting off work my you're boys go to huh i was gonna say you're full mom mode yes the, i'm getting off work and they may have even been later so most of the time i am getting off work i'm going to pick up the boys going to the grocery store and then I'm cooking dinner. So I'm in like making sure the boys homework is done. Like I'm trying, I'm in that mode. Yeah. So we have this conference call. Sometimes I would be either en route to Joe's track uh, soccer practice or I would be coming home. It just depends on the timing of the conference call. But you, those are the, like the type of things that were going on in my world at the time of this conference call. So keep going. So one conference call you missed one conference call you forgot I, to dial in okay okay and then the next two you were like you just had it on mute okay. you're cooking or whatever so by the fourth one these weren't necessarily like in sequential weeks mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. after like two or three in a row where you weren't really talking that much i basically decided without your consent yes i was like melissa's too busy for doing this actually my real thought melissa doesn't want to do this yes that was your real thought real i'm thought, happy you fixed it yeah melissa doesn't want to do this she she just if she wanted to do it, she would be talking, whatever. So let me let me help her. You know, what, Melissa, we don't need I don't need you on the conference call. These are his thoughts, not a conversation. Yeah, this with is us. my thought mm -hmm. to her. My thought. I didn't express this to her. Uh, I did say, you know, unless you probably don't don't worry about being on the conference. No, you didn't. Call. I never said that. No. And I'm gonna tell you why I know you didn't say that, because the week that I uh, ah. Miss. I only missed one conference you only call. Only missed one, and it was the last conference yes. call. That's and what, what happened I was conference call. Yes, and so the next week I called in. No one was on the phone, and I didn't tell you about that until later. But that's what happened. Really? Yes. I don't remember. No, I told you that I called in and was on the oh, call. Oh yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, yeah. nobody joined the call, and I didn't know that you canceled the conference call yep. started a separate track like i didn't know any of those things yes so what i thought is you know what i'll just uh text the producer when i need stuff mm -hmm. check on this venue check on that venue blah 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 i'm just motoring through how, how to get this off the ground mm -hmm. with three people what i'm not realizing is i am driving or setting a wedge absolutely between me and melissa mm -hmm. right now you don't know what's happening mm -hmm. you don't know what i'm thinking you don't know prices. You don't know anything. And I'm thinking you got to work. You know, it's the funny thing is when you hurt somebody and you think you are helping. Yeah. And we've been talking about that a lot. But anyway, so that is what I would say started the seeds of the seeds of discord. Yes. With this uh, thing. So Melissa brought it up much later. Like, I don't feel involved in this at all. Mm -hmm. You just going hard and that had never bothered you before because going hard was just making videos and sure like doing stand-up shows there was no we weren't working we had a we had an understanding sure. with that but this new thing you wanted to be more involved and probably the biggest mistake i made and i made this more than once is assuming that because you missed the one call and you were cooking that you didn't want to be involved mm -hmm. and i didn't stop to say hey when you don't talk, mm -hmm. it makes me feel like you don't care. Right. When you miss that conference call, it makes me feel like this is not important right. to you. And my nature is when I feel like people don't care or not important, I I just move on without them. Right. And no matter who that is, that's how and that has helped me in, in other parts of my career to keep going when people flake or whatever. Mm -hmm. But in my marriage, that was a very harmful approach. Yes. Right. So. M mind you, this is me figuring some of this stuff out months, months after, later, or a year after it happened. So now, fast forward to this year, and I realized that after this many years of doing stuff, you are like, um, I want to be a part. How do we work this out? How do we do this and that? And I have been doing stuff on my own so long, it's hard to give any of that up. Yeah. Right. We just <laughs> just had Josh start editing the podcast, right? So the first time he takes the iPhone and he hadn't backed up the footage before he left, he was walking out. I was like, hey, you don't, you didn't back it up. Hey, you're <laughs> leaving. Whatever you don't like. Kevin never has realized to to that me. he is a micromanager. And I, and for some reason, this is like a new revelation for him. And I can't stand it. 
I just want to make sure you do what I say when I say it and the way I would do it, please. And tell me when it's done. I know. I just want to know that uh, you did everything I said at the moment I thought it. the worst thing ever. And it is a new revelation for me because we've never had to work in this capacity together. Yeah. And so I have I have always been uh, number one. And we've had this conversation. I've always been good at my job. A beast. I have always found pride in going to work and doing a good job. I have received bonuses that no one else in my company knows about. Big B. And it'd be good dollars. Mm-hmm. It'd be good dollars. Um, <laughs> be, just to say, Melissa, thank you. Mm-hmm. You are our employee of the year. Here, this is just for you. Don't tell nobody. Right, we ain't even uh, supposed to do this. Yeah. So like, I know I, and that's every job I've ever gone to since I was a teenager, I've always done a good job. And I've always worked by let me manage my desk. If I do something wrong, come back. We can have that conversation. I'm always open to that. Mm. If you want to offer criticism, I'm open to that as well. But what I'm not going to have you do, did you finish this? So I never, um, I've never worked well with American Management. And quite honestly, if I've heard this from several of my supervisors in like when I worked was one thing I don't have to worry about, Melissa, is if I ask you to do something, I know it will get done. Like those are the comments that I receive. So when Kevin asked me to do something and he's like, did you, do you, have you, can you, I don't need your help. One thing I don't need is your help. So I'm going to need you to back up off me. And quite literally, we had this conversation. And this is the other thing. And I and I literally had to have this conversation with Kev. He's like, I feel like I'm just helping. Micromanaging is actually about trust. Mm-hmm. And that's what I think you don't. And like what you're communicating when you micromanage someone is that I don't trust that you are going to do what I asked you to do in a timely manner. So I feel like I need to check in on you along the way. Yes, that. You've never said that, though. You always say, I feel like I'm helping. No, 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 you're not. What you're telling me is that you don't trust me and you want to hold my hand. Well, when you are thinking of it, it doesn't. And your my mind doesn't say that. And that's a really interesting thing. I think another podcast is worth what you think you and are what's communicating communicate, and what's and what you are actually communicating, or at the very least what the person is receiving what the person is receiving because the, the other part of that and i've said this too literally these are conversations that i have with that we've had is that micromanaging is it's also condescending it's communicating a lack of trust and you were thinking i'm not going to do a good job mm-hmm. and so all of those things and because i am who i am I feel every piece of, I don't trust you. Mm -hmm. I feel every piece of, I don't believe you're going to do a good job. And that, let me tell you something, it just don't work for me. And so that has been a source of tension for us. And in addition, again, just going back to the tour, there were, there are specific moments during the tour that I can visualize that I wish I said something and I didn't. And it spawned, no, it didn't even spawn. It birthed It birthed um, the new campaign that I'm on this year, which is to just say it. It's summer, baby. It's summer. It's summer, baby. Camping season. Let's talk about pinching. T- <laughs> pinching tits. That's right. This episode is sponsored by Blue Chew. Guys, me, you, Joshi. Confidence can take you far in life. It can help you in the bedroom, especially when it comes time to step up to the plate and give her the home run of penis. Uh, Really quickly, I want you to know that there is a thread in my book club, because we don't read books in my book club, uh, (laughs) where they are talking about Blue Chew. And one of the ladies was like, I want to give this to my husband, not because he got issues. I'm just looking for a good night. And all the ladies on there are like, girl, go on, do it. Yeah, girl, I did it like that. Like, girl, yeah, he could get your knees ready. Get what? When I tell you. Get your knees ready. When I tell you, my book club is my favorite thing because we literally do not read the books um because one of the ladies was like i'm so grateful because between blue chew and menstrual cups they are saving bedrooms hey oh it's the combination we running red the lights two. hot girl summer you feel me i mean oh, well you're there. not really running a red light with the menstrual cup but anyway you can take them anytime day or night so you can plan ahead disc, or be, y'all. menstrual disc or be, be ready whenever an opportunity arises so listen to this 
If you can benefit from some extra confidence when it's time to perform, Blue Chew can help. And we've got a special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew for free when you use the promo code LOVE, love. at checkout. Just pay $5 for shipping. That's bluechew.com, promo code love, LOVE, to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring the podcast and the erections. Ladies, Blue Chew is exclusively for men, but the erections you will benefit from. And the end result is something you both enjoy. So get your man to sign up so he can smash your insides up. And we also want to tell you about Third Love, since we're talking about sexy time. It's a great bra that he can take off. It's a great bra that he can take off. It's comfortable all day. They have multiple sizes, um, colors. They have signature half sizes. You can take their Fit Finder quiz. But in addition, they have extended past lounge wear. And I get it. We all want to just sit in the house because, you know, the world's kind of opening back up. And I am actually the worst with my lounge wear at the house. I'll be in tattered T-shirts that are bleach with holes and pants that are probably my son's or Kevin's that I'm kind of rubber band on the side so it doesn't fall off me that's me at the house but it's also really nice to just feel cute while you're chilling at the house like feel good about your loungewear be cute in it be you know put some perfume on or some throw away those old college shirts and high school track meet shirts you're loud right now like this was a lot of hate (laughs) that was a lot of violence that was unnecessary however he is correct there's nothing wrong with splurging and feeling fancy for yourself even while you are at home You deserve some TLC. That's third love comfort. And their comfort extends from their bras to their lounge wear. You guys know I've overhauled my entire bra collection to third love um they're extremely comfortable they have the no strip no slip uh straps and their nude colors are actually a nude for everyone that's my personal favorite piece that i will say every single time uh the simple quiz factors into uh takes uh consideration of your size breast shape current fit issues and your personal style to find the perfect bras and underwear for you they'd stand behind their products if you don't love it exchange and return for free so far third love has donated 40 million dollars in gently used return bras to women in need supporting tr- charities in their local san francisco bay area and across these united states right now you can go to third love dot com slash love hour love hour to get 20 percent off your first purchase that's third love dot com slash love hour or 20 percent off your first purchase to day and so that's another thing of how that affected me and the domino effect is this just say it campaign mm-hmm. which in turn is going to directly affect you because now you've just been saying a lot lately. listen i'll be like okay i mean who is this she <laughs> oh what's up kev what up? Why are you? Why are because you? Because I'm gonna tell you one of. Oh, let me see if it's in my phone. But one of the, a meme, a meme that I saw on the interweb, the Love Hour, where memes make a difference. Yes, they do. Because I screenshot it. Let me see if I can find it. Do you want to say something while I try to find it? Okay, here it is. Okay, this is the meme. If you avoid conflict to keep the peace, you start a war inside yourself. What? I saw that and I literally screenshot this back in December, actually. Um, And I said, that is what happened. Yes. Because I'm thinking I'm doing the right thing. Trying not to be. This is another tidbit, women. Trying not to be a nagging wife. Mm -hmm. Trying not to be demanding or asking too much or, you know, taking up all of my space or speaking too loudly or being the angry black woman. All of those things. I want to be the cool wife. I want to be the wife that's, you know, all of those things. So I'm not going to say anything. And then you end up upset Mm -hmm. at yourself that you allow these moments to happen and they bother you. And you didn't say anything. And then your husband has no idea he's bothered you. And now I'm resentful to you. And you're mad at me for something you have not even communicated to me is a problem. And guess what I'm going to do? It again. Because I have no idea you're mad. And then one day I come in the room and you just brooding. And I'm like, why are you mad? I've been mad since 06. Exactly. I've been mad at you. And that How could you keep hurting me and doing something me. I don't like that I never told you I didn't like? You are precisely How right. dare you 
keep making the same mistake I have not told you is a mistake. And and that's exactly what happens. And that's when divorces happen 25 years into marriage. Because you wake up one day and you realize, I hate you. I don't, well, not only, no, it's not even that. (laughs) It is like, I don't like you. But also what is deeper than that is, I don't think you like me. Yes. Because you've been treating me this way for years. And, I have no and why, idea. if you love me, you wouldn't have treated me that way to begin with. Yes. And but I also didn't speak up to teach you that that hurts my feelings. Don't and do it that this, way again. I was so glad you owned your part of it. Oh yes. Because I was like, fam, I know she's mad, and I would ask you. Yes. What is bothering you? I'm fine. Because Nothing. the strong You're desire lying. yes that was a revelation from uh, yes. angel um but the strong desire to not come off as because one thing i realized about myself even in this just like say it campaign is that i'm i'm de- what i expect i can be demanding i want you to ca- raise the level at which you interact with me I, that's what I expect. Why? Because I'm like, I read books. I'm listening to podcasts. Like I, I am do. I read all the books. <laughs> I'm listening to a podcast every single day on yeah. relationships, on men, on women. How can I be a better spouse to you? Yeah. I want the same in return. That's demanding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got other. I do stuff as well. I make video, <laughs> I play children, I travel four times a but week. But the point is that being like being that honest with myself and recognizing that sometimes can make me feel or as women, I think when we have these like expectations and these standards, you question if you're lovable. Am I am I demanding more than I am worthy to be loved? Did I say that yes, correctly? Yes, I got it. And so you lower your standards or you accept less or you don't say anything and inside you are warring with yourself and the thing i think you probably misunderstood or miss i don't know misunderstood probably the right word we're gonna go with it yeah (laughs) i don't mind adjusting and i don't think most men would Uh, You got the right one. Best man on the planet. Know that. (laughs) But I mean, we're also speaking to an audience. But for right now, but to my own horn. (laughs) But no, I do. I do get that. Like, there's nothing worse, I imagine, than feeling away and then feeling like if I say something, you're going to turn it around on me. Yes. Right. But in our relationship, you know. Sure. I do whatever to make you happy. Like, even though. But the thing is. Your hands are freezing. I know. Um, <laughs> Cause I touch him like you're warm. Most men are like that. Like what? When I read and I've read a lot of books and even when they do, I read books. I read all the books. I do's my work. I do's my work. <laughs> um, but even when you hear the research that they do, most men are like, all I really want to do is make her happy and watch the game occasionally. Bruh, for real though. I know. When that's I what I'm saying. No that hour? most men literally, that's all they want to do. Yeah. What is hard though is that the work is hard yes the work is hard for me and for every other man and that's the that's marriage that it is the work friends. of a lifetime and it's not the i i rearranged our whole house i didn't rearrange the house i cleaned and organized some stuff you can't tell on the outside but deep down in the inside inside the closets and stuff I came like home, the bathroom was had a black bought, shower curtain first of all i came around the corner i was like there's a demon because <laughs> The bathroom has a black hole in it. Which, by the way, I was like, this is total like side note, but I bought literally the bathroom's black now. All the decorations in there is black. And at first I was like, this is like super dark. And I put it up and I was like, actually, this is like super sexy. I just love all the black. And then you get in the shower and you can't see your underarms. I I don't know. I have a thing for it. She didn't think that far. I did it. I don't care. I love it. I think it's the best thing ever. Um, But what I was going to say is that um, doing all of that, Physically, I was tired. My back hurt. Mm -hmm. My arms hurt from lifting stuff. I bought a drill. I was doing the most. I did all these things. And at the end of the night, I was physically drained and physically tired. Marriage isn't that type of work. No. It is the work of um, emotion. Mm -hmm. It is mental work. It is the work of I am here and I want to present and be my best self for this other person. 
Yes. And that's tired because sometimes you just want to be a jerk because you're in a bad mood. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and the other thing is, men, you're probably like me. Biggest mistake I made in our marriage up until this year. If I ain't cheating, you got the right one. Yes. I'm a great father. I provide. Give you all my money. I'll be here. Check my phone at any time. And I felt like because I brought that to the table, mm -hmm. the other stuff, I didn't even bother to uh, check my blind spot for that. Right. The other part is I didn't realize I was talking to Sosa about this. He he loves a love hour. He hit Shout me out up. to you, Chris Sosa. Shout out to you, Sosa, if you're, if you're watching this or making my shirts. I need the new uh, hoodies. <laughs> uh, he's my boy. He was like, Kev, hey, man, I'm realizing marriage is work from the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I was like, so this was just this weekend. I'm 15 years in, mm -hmm. 20 in relationship, probably doing the most difficult work work this year. As far as like the grandest adjustment of my personality yes. to accommodate for the person you are becoming mm -hmm. and to, uh, to, to accommodate for the life path that our life is now on mm -hmm. going into business together because mm -hmm. it's always been kev on stage business was separate yeah. you know you helped and stuff but but sure, not sure, much sure. now we are like co-partners mm -hmm. it, it was all like a perfect storm for difficulty it was transition and there was some beef in the household mm -hmm. you want to talk about you know because melissa there's years of stuff she didn't say and just because you don't say it doesn't mean it goes away you're it's, it's a war just, inside yourself you're just it's like when you put something in the trash right mm -hmm. you push it down push it down you push it down mm -hmm. you push it down at some point you cannot push the trash down mm -hmm. anymore yep you have to take the trash out yes to make room this was for a new great trash. analogy oh i felt it as i started <laughs> and then what happens is that the stuff you push down, maybe you first put some meat in the trash. Yeah, and it stinks. And it stinks and it's moldy. You just, I'm gonna put something else on top of that. So that's what you end up doing mm -hmm. in your marriage. Instead of being like, I gotta get this out, out. you compress it. And even you got at some point, you can only contain so, so much. much. And now you're blowing up. And your partner is like, fam, what? What's How are on? you this up? I remember one time, I remember this specifically. We went to Toronto. Okay. Over This is your favorite example. Because I, it, it, it brings to a point where I, I was just like, whoa. <laughs> Melissa took some lingerie, right? And and we were packing up to leave Toronto and she hadn't worn it. We had a great time. Like it was it was just notice as she was packing. I was like, ah oh, man, you ain't even wear the lingerie. She turned around, what do you want from me? Do you want me to be a business partner or your friend? I was like, I, I just I like to tell I will wait and wear the lingerie. That's all right. <laughs> but she blew up. And like, listen, all this stuff. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> and I realized now that those were feelings you harbored. Yeah. And for whatever reason, that it question just, just trigger. triggered. It had nothing to do with what we were talking it about. It did, but you missed it. I tried to explain to you the other day, too, and you still ain't got it, but it's okay. I had nothing to do. In my mind, I was just like. I literally just explained this to you this week. What is it? It's more than this episode. Okay. Be. I'm glad you didn't explain right now because you would have made me look wrong. <laughs> Scentbird is an amazing, an amazing opportunity for people like me. Now, I am Melissa. I mean, we both like to smell good, but we don't really go and spend time in perfumeries. Par perfumeries? Perfumeries? Perfumeries. We'll go with it. Just tasting out the scents, yeah. you know? And we like a, a dibble and a dabble. Yes. You know, and Scentbird is amazing because they'll give you a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you can build your own fragrance. You could try a few couple things out. It's amazing. I feel like um, when I'm on vacation, honestly, I put most of my cologne on. The time I don't forget is when I take a shower before bed and go to bed. Yeah, that is. If nothing else, I want to smell good for my wife at home. I yes. might forget during the day. But if I take a shower, I'm going to get in that bed because I, I want a good chance of, you know what I'm saying, blessings. You Hello. feel me? You know, and um, Scentbirds offered me and Melissa the chance to taste, uh, the, the chance to try amazing fragrances like Tom Ford, Gucci, Versace. Scentbird keeps us smelling good month after month. Scentbird is a fragrance subscription service that gives you the opportunity to shop from over 600 brands. It's a flexible subscription, so you can skip any month without penalty. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance to try every month for just $16 every month. You get to pick what you want to receive so there are no surprises. They have perfumes and colognes and a lot of unisex options. Choose the perfume you want to try, and they'll send you a 30-day supply. 
And what's great about it is like, for example, we've been doing a lot of traveling, as I just said. Yeah. So you just simply log onto your profile and you're able to say, nope, don't send me anything because I'm not I'm going to either not going to be home or I haven't used what you've given me already since it is a 30 day supply. So that's all you do. You go in there. You say, I'm interested in time four. That's the one that we got. I, I love it. Uh, the Gucci Guilty smells amazing as well. That's my current like grown up scent right now don't at me it smells amazing um and so you go in there you say what you want they send it to you in these nice little containers it's very easy to travel with actually they're very f travel friendly um and then if you haven't used it or whatever have you you can simply skip a month and pick up uh when you're back at home absolutely That's what we did that is what we did and with this exclusive offer offer just for our listeners you can get 30 percent off your first month today that's only 11 dollars for your first fragrance go to simber.com and use my code love hour love hour for 30 percent off your first month and again that's scentbird s c e n t b i r d dot com for you to try your first perfume for just 11 dollars. sign on smell amazing with scentbird.com using code love hour and now back to the show. But anyway, um, so that's the issue that we had. So um, how do you navigate through? So we've just explained all of these transitions. This is just one. No, transition. I know. But this is the most recent one. And I feel like um, we're we're on the other side of that. We're coming through the Bruh, other side of that. It was our sex. We was not having as much. That's a great barometer if things are not going well or not. We had Keep not going. beef like that in a, I can't even think of, it was about a two month time where it was on again, off again, like just weird energy, Okay, you know, and that was a long time for us. Like we don't have a history of, of a extended sure. unsettled things. Mm -hmm. What I've learned, the, the, the biggest, probably most important step is honest communication about how you feel yes. first mm -hmm. before the other person can fix it. Just understanding this, like, uh, when you do this, it makes me feel this way. Mm -hmm. When you do that, it makes me feel this way. I didn't understand that. This is how I do. And that, that was going back and forth. I remember one specific, um, Melissa has been telling me, you know, she's like, I'm this great employee, this great employee. And I told her and she, you know, she, she was like, oh, that's a good point. I was like, I've never worked with you before. So meaning I don't know, the nine to five. Meaning a nine to five. Mm -hmm. So I'm not aware of how great of an employee you sure. are. Like, like, other, like you're assuming that I know. Like, I know you're good at your job because mm -hmm. I know you get the bonuses, but I've never worked with you before. And when I micromanage, which I admit that I do, it's more good of for you. Yeah, it's more of yeah. I I, I try to be self aware. I'm working on it. You are working on being self aware. I have noticed that. I am. And it came even for we're planning a. Can I say it? You can say it. Okay. So we're planning a conference and um, this is the love hour, this relationship stuff. It's my heart. It really is truly my heart. And so Kevin had this phone call with someone and they, I don't even know how it happened. All of it I know is he came into the room and had a venue and volunteers and a full plan. And I literally said, I need you to back off. Take a step back. Fam. Take a step back. I need you to take a step back because number one, Kev just has a natural takeover spirit anyways. Like just his natural personality is I'm here now. So your boy is landed. So this is going to get on my back, my show. And, and my, and I don't have that personality, but I want to have so much involvement in this and i know if kev takes it over just naturally just part of the dynamic that we have i will step back mm -hmm. and i don't want that for this and so i was like literally i didn't want it was one of those this is a just say it moment mm -hmm. melissa this is a time where either you're gonna say it or you're not and you're gonna end up upset because it's gonna be 18 months from now and, and you're gonna realize that this is kevin's vision and not yours and so I said, it, and we had a really good, and he, I, I just feel like I'm helping. You're not helping. I want you to not help, actually. I want you to help when I ask you questions. I don't want you to be forward thinking. I don't want you to come up with ideas. <laughs> I want you to just not help me right now. Uh, how did you take that? No, actually? I said, actually, what happened was, how did you take it? Because you first said, I need you to take a step back. And I said, no problem. Mm -hmm. I'll take a step back. When you need me, let me know. Yes. You at first took that as you were like. <sighs> because your 
you're also changing what that means to you. What do you mean? What because do you, mean? you don't know what I mean to myself. Yes, I do. You don't know what because I mean to myself. Because normally you're, you're like, oh, you don't need my help. Don't ask me for nothing. Don't do nothing. Don't touch me. Don't at don't nothing. None of the things don't. And that what Don't even ask me what time it is or I have to say the word hour. <laughs> like literally <laughs> ain't no Kev love hour. is very much like, oh, you don't need my help. Don't ask me for nothing. But I didn't say it. I wasn't And that's what I'm saying. And I said in this moment, I said this is not me doing and that. And that was the further part of that dialogue yeah. when I said that was and then you were like, no, that's not actually you what said, I mean. Actually, what you said was, you said, I accept that. Would be first when I, when I said, I'll step back. Uh-huh, you said, yeah. I accept that. I choose to accept that because mm-hmm. I asked for that. And then I was like, now don't take this the wrong way. Like, I really right. will still give you ideas. And that's the part I needed. Yes, because I don't, I don't want to overstep my bounds. But, you know, I want to make this easier for you. Right. But what I realized is you want this to be your journey. And you don't necessarily want my, you want it to be your thing, which is fine. Right. And I still come up with ideas. We talked yes, about it. Yes, you it. called me at the gym today. We, you know, I've talked about it for 30 minutes. I wasn't really working out that hard anyway. <laughs> but what you have to be able to do to handle these transitions, the first thing, ex- you have to express your feelings. Yes. I have to express my feelings. And you have to have what I call difficult conversations. Luckily, I can say this without a lie melissa and i don't really argue Mm -hmm. in that traditional sense of like yelling fussing like it's not my personality uh it's not her personality and it hasn't been the nature of our relationship and i realize that's not the case for a lot of Mm -hmm. people but we do have difficult conversations Mm -hmm. where it's very hard to be open about your feelings it's very hard to hear somebody say something that you disagree with or whatever or the reaction but that's what's been helping us is you to hear hear me say here was my intention. Yes. I did not understand how you were taking it. What can I do? Actually, we talked about this in another podcast. What can I do so it doesn't come across like this? Mm-hmm. How can I do this? You saying your honest opinions and your feelings so I can make an adjustment because then you realize, okay, I made uh, a mistake there. Let me adjust this. Made a mistake there. Let me adjust this. Now, you some things start to click in a row. You're like, oh, this is working. This has been you know, a couple of things mm-hmm. where I've handled them in the right way. And the thing is, for your relationship, you, the viewer, the listener, you have to realize that for your spouse. And, yes. and one thing I had to remind Melissa, like, I love you. I want to be married to you forever. And I don't want this to break us up. And honestly, that is probably my biggest, um, like, advice tip here. Like, the practical piece is that remembering that you guys are on the same side. You know what? A lot of times in marriage, I feel like people feel like they're on different teams. Yes. I am the Seahawks. You are the 49ers. Right. We are on the same team. You may be on offense. I may be on defense. Sure. But we're both on the same team. And I think that's the most important part that you needed to hear is like, I want to work this through. I want to support you in a way that feels like support. Well, and not just me, but I, I mean, just like, again, in general, that's an important step. And I think that when you're having those difficult conversations, whoever is um, <clears throat> expressing their feelings or being the open one or being the vulnerable one and stating how they feel, whether it's the man or the woman, um, it's important for the receiving person to remember that their intent is not to hurt you. It's to establish a bond so you can move together in a healthy yes. relationship. And you can't do that if I'm not being honest with my feelings. Absolutely. Because I can only go with what you are saying right you it is unfair for you to hold something against me that you have not shared the truth with me and it's unfair to the person holding that information and to assume that they're not going to take it well so therefore i'm going to just keep it you have to do your part which is sharing it and that is difficult yeah you know you might feel like i shouldn't say this i don't want to nag i don't want to what upset them they're in a good mood they're in a bad mood but the more you don't do that because the thing is the worse it's going to be and the more resentment you're going to build absolutely so now i've got to undo so and here's the other part and i want to just say this quickly as far as my personality of micromanaging the reason i don't realize the reason i micromanage is because for so long i had to do it all and you're just impatient and yeah you (laughs) you are right (laughs) no one works as fast as i work one because no one cares as much about my art Mm -hmm. as i do Mm -hmm. it's it's the living breathe josh is a great teammate he works fast Mm -hmm. but 
after he shoots this, I mean, he might not edit this immediately. Mm -hmm. He might mm -hmm. say, man, I'm just going to grab something to eat yeah. before I edit. I will be importing footage the moment this phone turns right, off. Right. Right. So if I hit Josh, and he's like, oh, man, I have to pick up some food. I had to drop my brother off. <laughs> like he has a lie. Here's his thing. Yeah. Josh ain't never missed a deadline ever. Exactly. And that's how I operate. And I'm like, but you didn't do it when I would have done it. It will be edited right now, uploaded. Why are you hungry? I don't eat. I eat video files. I eat gigabyte sandwich. I'm not hungry till that video is uploading. It's so true. Because that's what I would do. The thought I want guests booked. <laughs> Hotel. Car. Why are you still checking prices? Don't check price. Buy the first flight you need. Because I'm the type, also, if I don't do it when I think about it, I will forget. Yeah. So what I've had to learn as Kevin, the, the creator, mm -hmm. I need to step back and trust you, mm -hmm. trust Josh, mm -hmm. trust Jason, trust Shari, trust Candace. Because if I don't. These were members on the team. Members on the team. I'm going to be making these short videos all the time. I'm going to be making, I, I will not be able to get bigger. No. At, with me holding yes. and touching everything. Mm -hmm. And guess what, Kevin, you got to understand, somebody's going to drop the ball mm -hmm. on something. Mm -hmm. I dropped the ball on my own self. Right. Very rare. And what I, like, I keep going back, what got me here, the reason I am this way is because people drop the ball and I'm like, bam, don't worry about it, I got it. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it, I got it. But I can't, don't worry about it, I got it, my wife. No. That ideology in business with employees or co-workers you can separate that yeah but we got to come home together and i we you know we talked about we had one dis difficult conversation i was like liz i don't want this i want to do this with you and if that means we stay at this level then that's just what it is mm -hmm. i'm not tripping but now we are working through a process i think that i wanted to bring up one thing that i thought worked really well oh i remember melissa for aska is kind of co-producing with me yeah, right yes so <laughs> she's absolutely and and her and josh and candace are now helping me where i am weak with organization it's just mm -hmm. not my thing mm -hmm. i just it's not my thing yeah. i think you're very rarely creative and organized equally well you know those That's things balance. people are super organized different parts creative, of the brain different parts of the brain so like you scientifically were, those are different yeah parts of the brain. yeah you were pulling the questions for asco mm -hmm. melissa has a personality she doesn't always check her text messages. You'll text I her don't. something, and if you text her three, four things, whatever you sent her first, I'm not scrolling. Back. It gets bumped up. <laughs> she be like, "Fam, I, you know what? I didn't even see that. I don't. I'm not scrolling. Didn't even see that, right? So she, what we're working together. I'm letting her pull the questions for Aska, right? I'm gonna tell y'all the honest truth, and then I'll tell you how, how I worked it out. <laughs> She's like, "Okay, Kevin, I'm gonna pull the questions. She's been doing great at it. She actually found a way to send them to the guests in a more a better way than I did, and she actually." called the questions and took out the repeat questions where I was just every question typing down. <laughs> Melissa would find a way to be like, it's really only 15 questions yes, and I'm taking the repeats on. Yeah. People are asking a lot of the same, same thing. So this was great. So the other day I'm in Baylor. I say, babe, I put the questions. I didn't say babe because we were beefing a little bit. Um, but I said, <laughs> list. Oh, no, actually everything was, I was cool, like, this day. cool this day. Babe, uh, list, uh, I put the questions up, right? Then I think I took off or something mm -hmm. and I think you were shooting a video. So I sent two or three other things mm -hmm. and then Jay was in that. Uh, we just start talking yeah, about yeah, something else, right? So now I'm at Baylor and you never acknowledged yeah, yeah, yeah. that I got it. Yeah. Kev, I know that you put the questions up, right? So I'm like, man, she said, <laughs> she said, when you asked me to do something, don't check. I, like I got it. You can trust that I got yeah. it, right? So I'm like, okay. There's a, it's it's on a 24 hour thing on Instagram. <laughs> like if she doesn't pull these questions, you they're gonna to be repeat, gone. Yeah. I'm gonna have to ask them on Periscope or some somewhere else. I don't wanna have to do that either. And I don't wanna check, so I'm kinda like stuck. So what I did is I text her, I said, hey, um, I noticed that you didn't acknowledge anything about the questions. Mm -hmm. And in our relationship sometimes, when I've texted you something, if you don't respond about it, Sometimes you missed it. Yeah. So I want to make sure you saw it and yep. you got it. And if you did, just throw a thumbs up on iMessage to, to acknowledge that you got it. That way I know not Signals to... Signals to you that, that I got it. That I got it. You don't have to say nothing else. Mm -hmm. I, now I know I don't have to worry about yeah. it. And she said, and I mean, my heart was... <laughs> doom, 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 doom. 
Dude, because you know when you text somebody, you never know how they're gonna take yeah. it and all this and that. Tone is all jacked Tone up. Tone is attack. all jacked up. So I try to be like very like here's how I thought about this. Yeah. Here's how this would help me work better. And she said, Fair, okay. And I was in the car like, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you put that in a way that was easy to understand. You knew, you know, I used my knowledge and experience with you, so you knew it wasn't just boom, and you understood that. And I you did. said, Fair. I got it. And guess what? I didn't tell you this. Okay, I, I'm gonna be honest with y'all. She said, okay, she had already pulled the questions. I did. She had already formatted them. Before I sent that text, I just turned my screen record on and I just look at all the questions. Because in case you didn't have it, I was never gonna tell you, like, I got them if you didn't have it. I have them. I did not want to lose them. Because there was some, because I was going in there and just, because I just like yeah, to see, see what, what the questions are. Are, are talking about. Yeah. But I know you're doing your job. Because sometimes I'll text you, I'll be like, man, this person didn't get as many questions as I thought. Yeah, or like, uh, <laughs> the Trump supporter, literally, the most questioned yeah. of all. But it, all of them just say why. of them. Why? 70% why, of them are just why? the word why. <laughs> Just why? So we will text back and forth about what we find interesting about it. But I just thought it was really good of us. Yes. To work together so that I don't you don't feel like I'm micromanaging you. Mm -hmm. I can trust you. And the same thing happens with, you know, with Josh as well. Like Josh will give me an update. And here's the one thing you've been holding me accountable for on a lot of stuff. I tell you often in joke, but it's true. Nobody who works with me moves as fast as i do it's your facts no one when i have a thought i go from me and mel your sister yeah. are like this in a lot of different yeah. ways and they say this is a trait of a ceo and I, it's not always a great trait but mm -hmm. it is a trait thought to action no lead time no lead time. they're the same same idea thought and it has helped in so many ways but when you are building a team mm -hmm. you can't go thought to action like that so for this new thing we're working on the blueprint i just want to use this final example and then I'll, I'll stop talking about this here's where you helped i have thought i have action you say oh i love this idea kev mm -hmm. but this touches a lot of different people mm -hmm. this touches josh for photos we got a mm -hmm. branding thing this touches Tish. She's going to have to create the flyers. This touches Candace. She's going to have to book this. This touches me in this way, Jay in this way. Instead of you calling Josh, calling this person, calling that person, doing this, how about you do what we did at my job? We have a launch meeting, and now you give everybody their task, set realistic expectations, mm -hmm. and we can all go, mm -hmm. right? That was you helping me. Right. And what ha that works because I was able to share that with you first, where Kev, uh, six months ago, would have been already calling venues and not even including you. Yeah. So now that we've worked, we're work, working through, because I don't want to say we're on the other side of, of sure, it sure, now. Sure. And I can but honestly it's a say work, that. It's a work in but progress. But it's still a work in progress because now you've got the combination of me undoing habits, Melissa doing a new thing, and the and the, the tension that that mm -hmm. can create. But I think going into these transitions with the idea that my spouse loves me and wants to work it out, is the first step yes your spouse also has to be willing to, to want to do that and then they have to know that's gonna be that's gonna mean the way we used to operate is likely gone forever the status quo is no longer and that's why i love my analogy about the iphone update well and, and your computer. analogy about this is our number one advice and we can end on this topic okay at this point is that don't expect anything to stay the same and don't expect anything to change. Man. And honestly, both of those things are true. Absolutely. Because there are certain or there is certain core programming that won't change. Yes. And so you have to love, learn to love your spouse as is from the moment you meet them and still be flexible enough to know that they're going to evolve. Yes. And there are certain things that they will change. Their mindsets will change. Yes. Transitions will happen and it will affect them and it will forever change them. And so while they are opposites, they are both simultaneously true. And in some ways, it's the becoming, the Michelle it Obama. Is. In order for you to become who I feel like you can be, you got to break out of that. Absolutely. I don't say stuff shell. Yes. Because you have to say stuff. You're going to have to say stuff about your speaking fees, what you will take. It's going to start here. Yeah. And you build that comfort here. Absolutely. And I, if I want, and this is why people get divorced. Somewhere along the line, you decide 
I'm not willing to put the work in for this version. Yes. And Melissa. I don't like this new version. I don't like this new. I, honestly. Because honestly. Go. Say what you Honestly. Say. When you first started just say it. I was like. <laughs> she's, she's tough. It reminded me. Interestingly enough. I can be honest about this. It reminded me about the first time I met you. Yes. When I first met you, I was like, this girl ain't playing with nothing. Yeah. She ain't playing. Like, if you're going to bring it, you're going to bring it for real. Mm-hmm. And slowly you stop being that I person. Did. And now I'm getting back oh, to. I don't want to cry. I, violence. <laughs> I'm getting back to 99 Melissa where you was like, I'm. this is who I am. Yes. Take it or leave. And not in the negative sense right. now. It is in the sense of I'm, I'm finding the person I used to be. And in order to be this better version of myself, mm-hmm. I got to go back to an older version. And I got to re-upload some of that software Absolutely. where I was like, I am strong. I got something to say. You're not going to run over me. That's to the world. Yes. And I'm like, I recognize her. Mm-hmm. I hadn't seen her for a I long haven't either. And I missed her. Time. <laughs> Shut there up. are some things I liked, <laughs> but no, but it, and that's the thing I loved about you. Remember when I first met you? Yes. That was the thing I loved about you the most. Yeah. I was like, no one has ever yeah. talked to me this way. Mm-hmm. People are usually fawning over me and they weren't attractive, but they were fawning <laughs> over me. And so I wasn't, and that's why I was like, oh, I like this girl's a challenge. Mm-hmm. She's going to be tough. She's like, oh, this is great. And then somewhere along the lo- the way, you just like mm-hmm. you know came small and small and small, and the the, the people I keep around me is the people who be like Kev Nah. Yes, I remember last week you and Jay was on some Kev Nah. Mm-hmm. I had to think about it, and I was just like, "You're right," <laughs> and I did. And you were like, "Good on you, Josh." Josh be jumping in stuff we don't even ask him <laughs> about. If he got a chance to say Kev Nah, <laughs> he'll say it. I love it. Do what you got to do. But Kev, that ain't, that doesn't work like that. And you need those people. You got, but you got to trust them. Yes. Because they, you, Josh, Jay, you have nothing, but we all want to grow together. But the point is, um, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I lost it somewhere. (laughs) So I think we could close it. (laughs) We're going to, we're going to stay the same, not stay the same. Everything will stay the same and nothing will change. Yeah, no, no. You can't get married expecting everything to stay the same. You can't get married expecting everything to change. And you don't know which is going to be which. And Honestly, it's a combination of both. It's a combination. People of are going to evolve. People are going to grow. And the other thing, and I, I know you'd be wanting to close the podcast, but I want to come and say a couple more things. Go for it. You have to be who you have to be for you. Yes. Before it affects me. Absolutely. And you hope Kev, I want you to be, I want to work this out, but I have to, I cannot go back yes. the same way when I, when it clicked in my mind that we needed to move from Washington mm-hmm. to LA, if you were going to be like, we have to stay, it wasn't going to work. Yeah. That's tension. There was nothing about me that was going to settle for a nine to five in Washington in state anymore. Right. Same thing with ADD. When it was right for the time it was right. I've been using the analogy if it was like college. Mm-hmm. It was great. And I love the people I met there and so many good relationships. But when it was time to move on, it's that nine to five Kev and the check every other week. Yeah. You can forget about it. Right. I cannot go back to that. Right. So and that's the same thing that's happening with you. You're like that quiet, meek Melissa that didn't say her feelings to you and therefore might not say it to other people. Mm-hmm. I mean that person's gone now so let's work together to love the new version of me because who you can't i don't it's funny i was using this analogy about how much i've changed in my life unrelated to marriage Mm -hmm. in the last 20 years right i've gained weight lost weight hairline came grew hated avocados and now you like love avocados hated spicy food i know that's so random that you like so random right so I, I used to be super into sports, would, would watch college football all day Subscribe on Saturday, to the magazine. NFL on Sunday, had magazines. I don't follow sports nearly as closely right. as I do now. So if I have all those changes just in life, how can I expect to be the exact person I was 
when we first met 16 and or even, 21 when we got married i'm 35 when you think about this when we went to dinner last night one of the girls was saying um she was like i don't even still have the same friends from when i was 17 <laughs> like even that like you go through just natural phases natural. and transitions in life and that causes you to meet new people yes. experience new things sometimes you have to break off friendships and they don't have to be like we fell out it's just right. you know it just happens because life happens so, that's the same like those the same thought process as far as those transitions and just all of that just also occurs in marriage and you just have to be willing to do those transitions navigate them together so that way you don't end up drifting yes. apart and that's what happens someone and i update say something too. kev this podcast is about to I be know, two I don't hours care. they still watching this one this transition the last thing i want to say how much time we have josh yeah, plenty of time. okay <laughs> The transition of um, you having a baby prepared for change. Yes. Hormone. Didn't know exactly what was going to sure. shake out at, but I, I saw that one coming. Mm -hmm. Your mom and dad getting divorced. Didn't see them getting divorced I coming. Like, I didn't see it. No, but when they got divorced, <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Sure. That's okay. going to change. Uh, same thing having JoJo, two kids. Mm -hmm. uh, me getting fired. Us moving. Was prepared for all those transitions to expect something. This last one, sure. The the you just just saying it in combination with the difficulty of bringing these two lives together. I can honestly say I did not see this one coming. I didn't either. In the same way, <laughs> and this is the most difficult one. It is. So I was unprepared for it because a lot of life transition. Everybody's you get married, it's gonna be different. Mm -hmm. When you have your first baby, it's gonna be different. Yeah. When I get fired, obviously it's gonna be different. Like I'm staying at home with a kid. Yeah. So, but this, I was like, this is gonna be smooth. Nah, not smooth at all. Chunky peanut butter. This transition was, and I was expecting this. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so I just think you know, in marriage, you have to be prepared. For the transition you didn't see coming. Yes. And you have to treat it the same way you would the ones you saw coming. Because it could be the ones you don't see coming that could be the ones that break you. Amen. I feel like I, I had a good game today. Are, are, did you get all your thoughts out? I did. I'm never going. I'm going to tell you something. If it's in my head, I'm gonna, I don't care if this podcast is three hours. I'm not going to keep you out here for three hours. You listen to two hour podcasts all the time. Melissa all the Dude, time i know but i'd be like don't nobody want to hear us talk for two hours they be they be watching and listening for an hour plus i should be trying they to save it. some for later Nick, like yeah. leftovers i'm gonna go back and listen to the rest <laughs> that's it thank you guys so much for listening thank you so much for joining us <laughs> until the next time bye bye